In the wake of World War II, the city of Rockville experienced its biggest growth spurt to date. The Depression was over, the federal government was decentralizing, soldiers were returning home, and as Terry Lakeen of Peerless Rockville explains, the American dream to own a home of one's own was becoming a reality. The federal government uh, took the steps in the 1930s to create the Federal Housing Administration, which set standards both for mortgages and financing as well as for housing construction and housing sizes, set all kinds of standards. Uh, and then with the, uh, a number of uh, congressional acts uh, after the war, the GI Bill, of course, um, which provided, among other things, jobs, education, and, and affordable home mortgages. In 1946, four builders purchased Walnut Hill Farm, 202 acres south of the city. Their goal, to meet this new demand for housing. Two years later, Frederick Bentley Jr., a World War II veteran, moved into this home with his wife. Georgia Bentley, now a widow, still lives here today. The GI Bill made it possible for us to afford the payment on this house. I mean, God, it was only $43 a month and of course, we didn't have any children, so that's how we could purchase it. Many of the new residents were young veterans and their new wives. The neighborhood appealed to them. In this section of Twinbrook, the streets were named after World War II battles and heroes, Admiral Halsey, Okinawa, Coral Sea, uh, Ardennes, um, and other sites familiar to the, to the veterans. Built on the southern side of Beers Mill Road, these early homes were small in scale. They featured a living room, kitchen and eating area, two bedrooms and a bath. The attic and basement were left unfinished. The idea was that these homes could be expanded as the young families grew. And grow they did. At one given time, you could count 30 kids out here in the court. They rode bikes and, you know, just horsed around all the time and played in each other's yards and, of course, birthday parties and block parties were good. Everybody set up um, play pens, brought food, and uh, we had a grand time. By 1951, Joe Gerhardt and Donald Gingery had bought out their partners and expanded development to the north side of Beers Mill Road. This footage shows that land being prepped for the new houses. Ads like this illustrate the interiors. $1,300 bought you the house with only the first floor finished. Another $1,100 and you'd get a basement. $3,000 more added two bedrooms and a bath on the second floor. In September of 1965, Charles Jesperson and his wife moved in, along with their first child, with another on the way. They soon discovered they were not alone. There were lots of babies. And the, the first week we were here, a man came in and they were doing a preschool survey, or it might have been the first month or two, but, and he was laughing because he'd been up on the next block and there were 72 preschool kids in 22 houses. That gives you some idea of the baby boom. Schools were constructed to accommodate all the children. Carl Sandburg, Twinbrook, and Meadow Hall were the elementary schools. Broom Junior High and Rockville High served the older kids. With the new decade came a new look. Here in Twinbrook Forest, the housing styles were changing. Well, the first thing you notice, I think, right away is that the homes are larger and they take up more of the lot size. But you also begin to notice the addition of carports, which, of course, indicates the increasing importance of the automobile in American culture. The other thing you notice is that the houses, uh, in addition to being larger, are more architecturally complex. And you see what we now know as a split-level house. Um, Gearhart also started making uh, more versatile floor plans, increased the number of bedrooms. Um, many of the homes now had dishwashers, which was a wonderful selling feature, I expect. In the late 50s, retail came to Twinbrook. This footage shows the grand opening of the shopping center on the northern side. Vice President Hubert Humphrey joined local dignitaries in the celebrations, marking a new era for the citizens of Twinbrook. And the shopping center just made things a lot more convenient for everyone because we no longer had to go all the way up to the middle of Rockville or over onto Rockville Pike where there were a few stores. A real community was evolving here. 
The Twinbrook Citizens Association was formed in 1949 and has been active ever since. Through it, the residents brought a library to the area. For 12 years, it was located here in the lower level of the shopping center. Then, in 1971, a brand new one was dedicated. They flocked to it. I mean, people lived at the library. It was close to home. You could, kids could walk down. Oh, and then they built a bike path, which made it more accessible for the kids to go on their own. The civic-mindedness of these new Rockville residents spread beyond the neighborhood. After helping to form Citizens for Good Government, a newcomer and Twinbrook resident became mayor in 1954. We elected uh, a young man, Dick Renhovsepian, who did the impossible. He lowered taxes and increased services and was an extremely efficient and good mayor. To date, six mayors of Rockville came from the community of Twinbrook. One went on to be the county executive. Despite these positives, it's sobering to remember that Twinbrook began as a whites-only neighborhood and remained that way for nearly 20 years. FHA standards, for one thing, stipulated that developers could not sell homes to uh, non-whites. And the standards were based on the mistaken belief that people wouldn't get along in racially mixed neighborhoods. Um, that prevailed until the 1960s with a series of successful court challenges and, and some federal legislation. But for at least the first, almost first, first 20 years, this was a whites only neighborhood. But times have changed. Today, Twinbrook is home to people of many cultures from all over the world. After more than 60 years, Georgia Bentley's neighborhood continues to be special because of one thing. The people, <laughs> the people make it special. They're just a good bunch of people. They're willing to help each other, and look out for each other. And I'd say that means a lot to know your neighbor. And that's what to me Twinbrook is.